This week, Salvage Squad is going a bit silly, in the Isles of Silly to be precise. St Mary's is renowned for its natural beauty, quaint fishermen's cottages and golden beaches. But we're not interested in any of that. Oh no, we're here to visit the island dump. We've come to rescue a forgotten hero, a hero once dedicated to the battle against crime, to keeping England a green and pleasant land. Yes, it's a council dust cart. In the Isles of Scilly, the narrow, twisty streets are a handful for large vehicles. So, in 1982, this one-off, custom-designed mini dust cart was shipped over. But 20 years on, she's been tossed on the rubbish heap herself. The owner of this unique pygmy dust cart is former bin man Steve Jones. He now runs a gardening business in the Isle of Wight, but he possesses such an infectious enthusiasm for dust carts that we couldn't say no to this restoration. But now, in the cold light of day, at the Isles of Silly Dump, are we about to regret that decision? Hello, Steve. Oh, Suggs. How you going, Oh, mate? guys. So we found you. Where is it? This is it here. You've got to be joking. No, that's it. That doesn't want restoring. That one's binning. It's all there. Yeah, it's here, there, and indeed every flaming were. Oh, just needs a little bit of attention, that's all. A little bit, Steve. Just a little bit of attention. <laughs> I think you need a little bit of attention. No. That's just bits. Expensive bits, actually. When new, this unique Shell of Oak and Drury Revo Pack PN Mini cost 100 grand to hand build. Something of a one off himself, Steve has been a bin maniac as long as he can remember. He's harbored a lifelong, if slightly offbeat, dream to acquire his very own dust cart. How did you come across this one? I come across this one whilst on holiday on the Isles of Scilly a few years ago. I see it from the taxi after I just arrived and I thought, oh lovely, they've still got a shell vault working over here, I'll have to go and have a look at that. I didn't know where it, where it would be, obviously, so I went down the incinerator plant and waited for it to come in to eject its load. You stalked it? Yeah, I, I went and went, went, I didn't know where it was, you see, I see it from the taxi on the way. I'd been coming over to the Sillies for a few years and got to know the guys and that, and uh, I spoke to one of them on the telephone that uh, they got a new one. So uh, I said, what's happened to the old one? He said, sit on the tip. They're waiting to uh, get rid of it somehow. I always said to them, not laughing about, I'd like to get hold of this and restore it when, uh, when they're finished with it. And one day, it actually came, it came true. They said, you can have it. So what would it mean to you to see that fully restored? Beyond my wildest dreams, really. I mean, I'm never going to get another one again, am I? Well, here's our deal, Steve. The salvage would restore it, but you're not allowed to see it until it's fully restored. And if we do get it fully restored, would you like to drive it? Yeah, I'll drive it. Have you got an HGV licence? Well, I haven't, actually, but I've applied for the test. Well, good luck with the test. I'd love to see you in that cab again. Yeah, so would I. And I'm going to go and see what the squad are doing. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> what do you reckon? It's a load of rubbish. <laughs> That's a bit of fun, isn't it? That's a scrapper, mate. Come on. <laughs> Jerry may have a point. It's only a few weeks till Steve's HGV test. And if we're going to deliver the dust cart to him then, we'll need to get a move on. But even transporting it from the Isles of Scilly to our workshop in Devon is a major operation. The pieces have to be put on a low loader, taken down to the quay in two trips, and hoisted onto the supply ship. But soon the dust cart is on its way. I just hope we can make Steve's dream come true. It was the Victorians who first organised refuse collection via vehicles, firstly horse-drawn, then later mechanised. The now-defunct company Shelvoke and Drury started making specialised commercial vehicles in 1922 and almost immediately enjoyed phenomenal success with this, the freighter. Conceived as a universal transport tool, but soon adapted for rubbish collection. The name S&D became synonymous with ingenious, highly specialised hand-built dust carts. And in 1971, 
they introduced the Revo Pack, a revolutionary vehicle that broke up and compacted rubbish with ruthless power and efficiency. Hydraulics are at the heart of the Revo Pack's refuse collecting mechanics. A hydraulic pump on the front of the engine sends oil under massive pressure to the compactor, powering the rotating teeth which break up the rubbish, as well as working the rams that lift the whole compactor section when it's ready for dumping. Hydraulics also power the huge ejector ram in the main body where the rubbish is stored. This ram is attached to the ejector plate, which pushes the rubbish out at the dump. As Steve puts it, ejecting its load. The disembodied dust cart has now arrived at the Devon-based workshop of restoration expert Fred Saunders. Ex-racing driver Fred has breathed life back into shed loads of vintage vehicles. But a dust cart restoration is a novelty even for him. He'll be overseeing the team as they get their hands dirty on this unusual project. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> what, what have we done? done? <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, God. Do? That's what your brain's tested. At least for once on Salvage Squad, all the parts are in one place yeah. together. The chassis and cab section on the left, the compactor unit in the middle, and on the right, the main body or bin section. As good a place as any to start our appraisal. So what do we know about hydraulics? It's fluid in pipes at very high pressure. <laughs> very high pressure which you sort of compress and that moves something else a bit further down the line. Personally, I wouldn't trust any of these hoses at that sort of pressure after it's stood in a dump for however long. No. But if you come round here, you can see the ram properly. There we go. That's actually what compacts the rubbish and then tips it out right at the end, isn't it? Ejects it at the end. Yeah. Well, that's not right, is it? I mean, look at the rust and the pitting on that. I mean, it's shot. I don't like the look of that. I don't, I don't want that for a job. Should we give that to Axel? Yeah, let's fill that off on him. This is the main compactor unit, but uh, all the guts is gone. Yeah. All the guts is gone. You know, there should be a big compacted yeah. jaws that go around here that run through this big four-inch shaft. It's a hell of a thing, but it's not there. We haven't got it. So we have a problem. Well, two out of three completely knackered's not bad. Let's hope the cab's in a better state. Drop it in the back. Oh dear. Is there anything we can do with this? Well, it's missing its doors, it's missing... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much everything. But for what we can see... Despite appearances, the unique mini chassis seems to be in a reasonable condition, along with the engine and gearbox. Overall, however, the project is so daunting, there's only one possible course of action. A tea break. Yeah, I think we've finally done it, haven't we? Right. You can go and tell Steve we can't do it then. In which case, I feel we ought to take the coward's way out. Do it. We'll do it. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, when it comes to jobs and things, apart from all the general sort of running gear and all the rest of it, what makes it special is the dust cart section. Yeah. Hydraulics. And hydraulics. I've just got that, haven't I? Yeah, you said the word. I've said the it's word. Your job. <laughs> it's your job. Got to keep stung, Jerry. Yeah, I and should learn that by now. There's a compactor unit on the back. Yep. It's got a ram. And the ram. Well, we thought the ram it's had just your, your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hydraulics, the compactor, and the ram. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. And all the rest of it will just it's all fit in. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy with that. So to make this a working dust cart again. Claire will have to get the teeth turning in the compactor unit. Axel must restore the ram in the bin section to its original rubbish ejecting condition. And Jerry will have to refurbish all the fiddly valves and pipes which supply the hydraulic oil to power these components. Go on, Axel. Yeah, give me a pump. Before all that, yeah. though, the team have got their work cut out, stripping the chassis and removing the cab. And better and better. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining it's rust. Raining rust. With the cab currently resisting all attempts at removal, Axel and Jerry try and cheer themselves up by taking a closer look at the hydraulic ejector ram in the bin section of the truck. 
Unfortunately, the dust cart has another nasty surprise for them. It's not looking too good, is it, Fred? No, no this is right through into the metal. It must be almost through the ram now. Come on. Cheers. Bye. Right. Bin it. Bin it. Okay. Okay. As the team washes away 20 years of grime, a sense of frustration grows. We know that this dust cart was tailor-made, so getting replacement parts like a new ejector ram is going to be nigh on impossible. All this hard, dirty work could be in vain. Jerry, for one, is not a happy man. I don't want to play this silly game anymore. It's ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Just grind on, Jerry. Just grind on. Owner Steve, meanwhile, doing his day job as a gardener on the Isle of Wight, is oblivious to the problems his beloved bin truck is causing. I believe they will treat it with the respect they would if they were restoring, say, um, an old Rolls Royce motor car. Go on, kick it. Kick it! I don't like the thing anyway. Go on, kill it. Put some weight. Hang on. That's it, that's it. Clear. It's this hard, taking the thing apart. Can you imagine what the rest of the restoration's going to be like? Wait, 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 wait. But things might just be about to get better. Claire and Jerry have heard about a potential solution to our spares crisis. This scrapped shelv oak languishing in a field a few miles away is a newer full-size model, but it might just yield enough common parts to give this project a new lease of life. This could be very, very good, Jerry. Look at that interior. That is good. And the back. Well, this section where the rubbish goes is looking very empty. Can we use this? No, it's too long. Oh, of course it is. That's what makes our special, is the fact it's so short. Yeah. Where's the ram, anyway? You're standing on it, mate. Right. Well, can you use that? No. Because it's, too, it's long. too long. Right, OK, fine. But the compactor... Nice thought. Well, here we go, the compactor. And this one's got all its teeth. Oh, that's brilliant. Do you reckon we've got to take the centre out of this and put it into ours? Or do you reckon we put the whole back on it? I'd, I'd say go for the whole lot. It's the same size. Yeah, I reckon we should go for it. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, we've hit pay dirt here, really, yeah. haven't we? So if we use the chassis off of our little one, which is the special bit, yeah. use the cab that's over there. Middle bit off the little one, because yeah. that's what's special. That's what's special. Put this tail on it, providing it checks out. Yeah, and we might have ourselves a dust cart. And nobody has to phone Stephen telling we can't do it. Yeah. Jerry and Claire return to the workshop with the good news. What's the plan? We've got a plan. We've got the cab from the front of the other one. We've got the chassis here. We've got the middle bit from this one, and, and we've, we've got, got the, the tail from the other one. Dustbin truck. Did you find a ram on your, on your journeys? No. Oh, well, we found a full-size ram. Ah, right. If that's any good to you, we can have it. That's the one at about four foot six too long. Yeah. Hang on a minute. If we can shorten it. Yeah. Is that out of the question? No, we'd have to have a good look at it. It's a possibility. Just take out one of them. It depends on what the diameter of the rams are. So if they're the same, we yeah. can theoretically shorten it. You're standing here we can this thing. We can only cross our fingers and hope because right. that is a big problem. Axel is now on a mission. But will the scrap ejector ram be in any better condition than the one from our original dust cart? Right. It's good news. Apart from the odd blemish, it's pretty much rust-free. I think we found our ram, which is really good, but it's a bit too long. And as I know, we can't exactly buy this off the shelf, so I'm going to have to adapt this in some way. Either cut it down or lose an extension. I don't know if it can be done, but I can only find out. And while Axel puzzles that one over, I'm off to the home of dust cart owner Steve on the Isle of Wight to see if I can discover the cause of his bin mania. I wonder if I've come to the right place. Steve. Hello, Suggs. How you going, mate? I'm all right, and you? Good. Can I come in? Yeah, of course you can. Wipe your feet. That's it. There you go. I say, Steve, you've got quite a gallery here. Yes. All seem to be on a similar theme, funny enough. Yeah, my theme. <laughs> <laughs> They're yeah. all the same. What are we looking at oh, here? Not really. Well, will start with this one. This is quite interesting, shall we? That's, um... All nuts, that is. Condemned food. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Condemned food from Heathrow Airport. Nuts, which 
it's possibly what some people might think about your obsession with these lorries. Quite a few people do. I've been called a few <laughs> names in my time. And what's going on there? That's the local landfill site here on the Isle of Wight. That's a 15M Dennis Phoenix ejecting its load. That's an interesting one. This photograph was sent to me from my mate in Holland. That's a PY Shelvo Kondrui Revo pack. It's in left-hand drive and the control levers on the right-hand side. He Where did this interest in dust carts come from, Steve? I've always had it. I've always been involved with dust carts. I've always liked, liked the things. I've always studied them. They're all slightly different. They've all got different characteristics. They're all hand-built for, for different tasks. You never thought more deeply as to why it is refuse I collection means so much to you? Yeah, it's not just the rubbish. The rubbish is something what they carry, like, mm. you know, some people are into buses. Mm. You know, they're not into the people what climb on them, are they? <laughs> it's the engineering and how the vehicle works. I mean, there's a waste exhibition I was at at uh, Paynton there. It goes every year. I start as my holidays there. <laughs> What's over here? What we got over this side? A lovely little idyllic scene of thatched cottages in the Isle of Wight. But even in that, it's got a dust cart. Oh, you mean the uh, PNL Plus Revo Pack D35 SGS? Very probably I do. But Steve, is there anything in this house that doesn't relate to dust carts? I mean, what about that lovely plant over there? Oh, you mean the uh, weeping fig, Victor Benjamin of Erigata? No, I got that off the tip in West London where I lived. <laughs> of course you did. So you lived in West London. How on earth did you end up in the Isle of Wight? Well, I used to come down here for the, uh, my holidays in the summer from the early 80s. Well, when I was, at, from when I was very young, really. Uh, and I got to know the uh, guys in the dust carts. And I ended up going out helping them. So you'd be out emptying bins for nothing? Yeah, for no money in the morning. During your holidays? Yeah, bring me overalls with me. That doesn't sound like fun to me. Oh, we had, I had a great time. I really met some good friends and I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I worked with them for a while when they were short. It was a good crew. I liked going up there helping with them, helping them out. Yeah, yeah. That's fascinating. Uh, and while Steve treated me to an oh, exhaustive tour of his house, so I started to wonder, totally what on earth did those Isle of Wight bin one. men make of yeah, Steve when he came to help them out on his holidays? One, four, eight, I decided to meet up with one of them as soon as possible to find out. When I escaped from Steve's house, that is. Finding a solution to the spares availability problem that has plagued the project has gone to the team's heads. And while they continue stripping down the chassis, a distinct mood of euphoria has developed, despite the weather. <laughs> The stripping down is complete, but if anything, it highlights the extent of work that still needs to be done. So it's time to press on to the next stage of restoration. Out with the old compactor unit and in with the new one from the scrap dust cart. Along with the skeletal chassis, it's carried into the workshop to be refurbished and repainted by Jerry and Claire. And Axel takes his replacement ejector ram to a hydraulic specialist to see if it can be shortened to fit our mini bin truck. The ejector ram and plate are pushed back by the pressure of compacted rubbish as the dust cart fills up. When the bin section is full, the telescopic ejector ram can be extended under hydraulic pressure to push the rubbish out at the landfill site. The problem with the replacement ram is that it's too long for our mini dust cart. Hopefully hydraulics expert Peter Stinton can help Axel find a solution. What we need to do is restrict the rod from coming out as far as it does now. And to do that, right. we make up a, a tube, right. and all we need to do is unscrew the collar, put the tube on, and put the collar back on, which will prevent the tube from coming out that far. You make it sound so easy. It's quite basic. Is it? As long as we make the tube the right size, right, I've got you. it's a simple operation. Right, OK. The way the ram works is simple but effective. It's made up of four oil-tight sections, which extend telescopically when hydraulic fluid is forced in under pressure. To shorten the ram, rather than cutting it down, Peter suggests the easy solution is to prevent it extending to its full length. This can be achieved by inserting a precisely machined metal tube, called a stroke limiting sleeve, into a section of the ram. When hydraulic pressure is exerted, this sleeve becomes wedged in the barrel, physically obstructing the ram's progress and effectively shortening its stroke. So in unscrewing this collar, all four tubes will come out of the barrel. You can withdraw it all the way. Right. Okay. 
Before being able to make the sleeve, Axel and Peter have to dismantle the ram to check and replace its oil tight seals. Meanwhile, back at the workshop, things are moving apace with Jerry painting the chassis and Claire reconditioning the compactor unit. That's the bearing cap off. Down here at the business end, where all these tines are sort of moving and compacting the rubbish, it takes a real hammering. And this is the compactor off the spare dust car, which we're hoping just to recondition. I really don't want to get new bearings made. I just want, for once, my bit of the job to run smoothly. Back in the Isle of Wight, I was waiting to hitch a lift on a bin round to meet Richard Jackson, dust cart driver and friend of our bin maniac, Steve. I was eager to know what Richard made of Steve's unpaid dustman's holiday. At first, understandably, Richard had made the mistake of thinking that Steve was a fully paid replacement dustman. Oh, yes, he, he was running around, chucking all the bags of the rubbish in, emptying the dustbins. I said, you're a marvellous chap. I said, you're so keen and you're so fast chucking the rubbish in. I said, you're unbelievable. You're the best rent man I've ever had. And he said to me, Oh, no, I'm not a renter man. I'm just doing this for my holiday. I said, your holiday? He said, yeah, he said, this is my holiday, he said. A dusting holiday on the Isle of Wight. Watching Richard and his hard-working crew that morning got me thinking, what would happen if we didn't have a rubbish collection? Well, this. During the winter of discontent in 1979, bin men went on strike, leaving some streets waist-deep in rubbish. This, younger viewers, believe it or not, was Leicester Square in London. Nowadays, we throw away more rubbish than ever, almost half a tonne per person per year. And it all miraculously disappears from under our noses in a slick operation that most of us take for granted. I was developing a sneaking respect for the unsung heroes of this dirty job, not just for the bin men, but for the dust carts that can cram the rubbish of a staggering 1,500 households into one single load. Without all this, our streets would be drowning in a sea of rubbish. Back at the hydraulic specialists, it's Axel's chance to show off his skills on the lathe as he makes up the stroke limiting sleeve for the ejector ram. Hopefully, this sleeve will fit inside our ram. I've got to keep watching it. Uh, it will fit inside our ram, which I'm going to take over to the other side now and install. Hopefully, it will fit. Good dragon, Pete. Okay, Axel. Nice finish, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna check the size now. Yeah, that's true. The crucial moment. All right. I don't even want to look. You better tell me. Yeah, four point three seven five. Fine. Ooh, That'll do nicely. Take the... There we go. Let's take her away. Let's go and fit her. Okay. And take the bottom end. Okay. For hydraulics to work, you can't have any leaks. That's why all the parts of this ram have been so precisely manufactured. When reassembling, each section has to be sealed tight, and the stroke limiter sleeve that Axel has made must fit inside perfectly. Fingers crossed. What we've got to do now is fit the, the sleeve, the stroke limiter. Right, this kitty. Okay. Yes, my little baby. Just slide that one in. Let's get all the rubbish off it. How's it going there? Nice and square. Once he goes in, he's not going back out, is he? Not unless we tip it upside down. <laughs> Here goes nothing. There he is. Right, well, that's it. Our sleeve's been put in. Acts as a limiter so our ram doesn't go fully extended. Dropped in. It's as easy as that. Success for Axel, but there's still a long way to go. Not least for owner Steve, who somehow ferreted out a full-size dust cart to take his HGV lessons in. <laughs> But despite the expert guidance of friend Richard Jackson, he's still got a lot to learn. OK, changing it down, Steve. They're in two higher gear. Get down in the right, correct gear range. That's it. Double the clutch. Whoa, not like that. Sorry, get in the right gear, will you? Back at the workshop, Jerry's putting a final lick of paint to the stripped-down chassis, while Claire and Axel finish reassembling the dust cart's engine and gearbox. 25-minute changeover. Fortunately, despite years of neglect, 
the chassis and running gear are in good health, and we are now ready to fit the replacement cab from the scrap bin truck. It should be child's play, but as the team have discovered, anything to do with this dust cart is far from straightforward. Are we looking good? Okay. Yeah. Talk to me, because Fred's relying yeah, yeah, on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right, wait there. Stop. Right, now. We almost got, almost got it. So this is off. I think it's going to be a bit of a lean there. Right, now put it down. Oh. Right, there you go. Right, sledgehammer. Yeah, yeah. Give it a whack. <laughs> the cab just doesn't want to go on. As the squad have discovered, because Shelvo and Drury dust carts are hand-built, swapping spares from one truck to another is fraught with problems. You can see, because this isn't the original cab, it's just too tight there. It just won't go on. It's making us rather cross. <laughs> it's left up to Axel's fine engineering brain to come up with a possible solution. Is it going? Yeah. You're encouraging it. Despite everything seeming to line up, the cab still won't go on. So, much to Jerry's amusement, Axel goes to plan B. <laughs> See, that side's going up and down. It's this side, it's, isn't it? That side's going this up side's springing up and down. Yeah, more? Yeah, go on. <laughs> See, that side's clear. That side's clear. Hang on, Axel. <laughs> Hang on, Axel. What's happened? The rad's too wide. Oh, oh for pity. Fred, just I do it. Say it do it. In. Bit in the beginning. Yeah. Axel's engineering contribution, however amusing to watch, is not going to work. The new cab won't go on the chassis because it doesn't have a cavity in the underside to accommodate the old radiator. So it's cab off and back to the drawing board. Look, this is already sat on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, but Claire, look, 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 look at the hole. This is the governing factor here. Mm. The hole's up here on the other Yeah, the other one, the hole's right up here, mate. Can you turn it upside down? <laughs> Can you turn it upside down? Good idea, but no. Come on, Axel. Your particular brand of physical engineering didn't seem to work, yeah. so you ought to have more respect for Claire's lateral yeah. thinking approach. Claire? Mm -hmm. You may well be a genius. What, upside down? Turn it upside down. She goes, right, hold on. Wait a second. But then, we need, all we need is a longer hose of this. Well, don't worry about that, because the other hose comes up the other side. You might have done it, Claire. Don't get too cocky yet, girl. <laughs> the offending radiator is removed. Claire suspects it has been designed to be turned upside down to sit higher or lower, depending on what type of cab it's fitted under. To see if she's right, the squad will have to compare it to the one which used to sit under this cab in the spares vehicle. I am not convinced. Don't you? That fitting needs to be up there. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, because that is the way up it used to be. Right? That's how we need it. This is to be blanked off, like that is blanked off. Mm. Right? So that's you have a different filler system on it. That's it. Mm. No, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I'm too. convinced. So they are reversible. If Claire's right, the team just need to turn the radiator upside down and the cab will go on. If she's wrong, she won't hear the last of it. Wait for it. Keep on going. Go on, Wait mate. for it. Hey. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> wicked. That is wicked. That was the fun part. Well done, Claire. You deserve a nice cup of tea. Which is quite timely, really, because I want to sit down and talk rubbish to everyone. Hello, my old friend. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you doing, mate? Right, you turned up after the struggle. <laughs> Just in time for a cup of tea, though. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, mate. Get on. Oh, dear me. Do you this bin truck, not our favourite thing. Not my favourite thing, for sure. So, squad, how's it been going? Slowly. Cold and wet, nothing fits. Yeah. But apart from that... <laughs> <laughs> it's fresh. It's fresh. You're in the fresh air, Jerry. Are you lousy. enjoying yourself? No, it's a lousy, rotten, horrible thing, and I hate it. Well, listen, I'm not here as normal to complain about the amount of work you've done. I'm here today to enthuse you with the joys of a rubbish collection, Jerry. Now, I saw some old footage of the 1979 Bin Man strike. You've seen the state of London within a week of oh, no really? rubbish being collected, literally yeah. two or three feet deep. Bin Men, fantastic people. Great. Needs to be done. Hurrah. That bin truck, get it out. 
Look, Jerry, that piece of machinery out there is every bit as valuable as your vintage motorbikes and deserves to be restored in the same way. Bin trucks have not changed substantially since that thing was built. It's still recognisably a modern I bin. I think I'll have to jump in there and agree with Suggs because this thing's one of a kind. It's a one-off. There's no more left, is there? So we've got to save it. Well, I'm going to go away and find out a bit more about our bin truck. And if I'm not convinced that I can convince you, I won't come back, all right? Excellent. See you later. See you later, mate. <laughs> Fat chance. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that, Jerry. Well, there's no time to lose. I've got to prove to the team that our pygmy show of Oak Drury Robo Pack is a classic vehicle worth restoring. And they've got to help Fred fit the bin section onto the chassis. It's only when you reach this stage in a restoration you get an idea of how the finished vehicle is going to look. In this case, like a dinky toy. <laughs> Jerry's main task on this project is reconditioning the hydraulic valves and pipes. So he's off to the hydraulic specialist, armed with the perished hoses and old directional valves from the spare compactor. Right, I've got various pipes and valves for you. Okay, Jerry. The valve Jerry will be working on has been unused for years, so it needs to be reconditioned to make it absolutely oil tight. This is a very simple valve, but it does take a heck of a lot of pressure. So we've got to take it apart, replace the seals, and put it back together again. Then we've got to test it. In the central position, a directional valve like this lets no oil through, and the compactor remains at rest. But with a flick of a switch, it squirts oil under massive pressure to the pistons on either side of the compactor, which power the rotating teeth. That's the middle of the valve. It's as simple as that. It merely diverts oil one direction or the other. I need to find out what size it is, and then I can replace the O-rings. Well, they're exactly one-eighth of an inch, so I need two this size. There we are, one inch by one-eighth of an inch. BS 214s Go and get a pen. This O-ring may look trivial, but as the oil pressure passing through the valve is so massive, this tiny seal could be the difference between the dust cart working or not. OK, Jerry, you've reassembled it. Yep. Now comes the crunch time. What can go wrong? The most likely thing that could happen is the casting could crack. Right. With oil under that pressure, it, it wouldn't explode in, that, in the true sense of the word, but if it does crack, then oil will come out at high velocity and just don't get in the way of it. I'm going to know all it, about it. Because it could be nasty. Right. This so new unsettling it. piece of information you know seems to have had the same effect on Jerry as headlights on a frightened rabbit. But if he is about to become a hydraulics casualty, he'll only have his own handiwork to blame. Stand clear and I'll operate the lever. You say clear. Just, Another... just stand away, just in case. Now I'll build the pressure up to 2,400 and hold it there. And then we check for leakage. Well, that appears quite dry both ends, actually. Yeah, that's completely dry. Fine. That's it. It's good passed. job well done. Thank you very much. Take it away, then. Happy to be no more oily than usual, Jerry makes up some new hydraulic pipes using the old ones as a guide. OK, let's start it's operated. Then you know it's fully crimped. Okay, release. Nice flare on the end. Yeah. Four nice new hoses. Jerry proudly returns to the workshop to refit the pipes and valves. You'd think he'd be quite pleased with his progress today, but it's not long before the red mist returns. Fibbing, rotten, stuffing, stupid darn thing. Oh, Jerry. What do I have to do to convince you this bin truck is worth saving? Perhaps historic vehicle enthusiast and author Barry Woods has the answer. We restore all sorts of things. Uh, we restore tractors, uh, we restore traction engines, steam engines, boats, uh, anything that is getting on a bit, if you like, we restore. And there's no earthly reason why we shouldn't restore a dust cart. Well, as is a show of Oak and Drury, as is this, does that add meaning to the restoration? 
Oh, very much so. Um, they were probably the most expensive dust carts almost throughout their existence, but they were definitely the Rolls Royce. The Reverpack, the vehicle you're restoring, may be unique. I'm not sure because I don't know of any other that's actually been restored. And of course, the design, the Reverpack, being revolutionary, not only in its action but also to accommodate the change in refuse that we were having in those days into the new era of packaging uh, light refuse and lots of cardboard that need to be crushed. Well, I'm convinced, but if we are going to save our historic dust cart, we'd better get a move on. Claire has been fortunate with her allotted task, reconditioning the compactor. She's already examined the bearings and moving parts, and despite neglect, everything seems to be in order. But with anything hydraulic powered, it can only be tested for real when it's back on the vehicle. So Claire's job now is to respray the compactor, refit it to the truck, and prepare it for that all-important final test. In the meantime, Steve's part of the challenge, his HGV test, is coming to an end. Yeah, thanks a lot anyway. Okay. Ta-da. Bye-bye. So Steve. You all right? Hang on. How'd you get on, mate? Oh, no good, I'm afraid. No? No. I'm too troubled with the gears. You were so confident once, this morning. Yeah, once on St Mary's roundabout, I missed a gear. That's an instant yeah, failure. Yeah, it's an instant problem. So That's um, a shame. So it's a shame about the finale, Steve. Who wanted you driving your truck? Oh, well, they'll have to get someone else to drive yeah. it, won't they? Never mind. All right. You can always do it again. Yeah, have another go at it some other time, I suppose. Yeah. It's not a problem. Have another go some, another day. It's a spirit that made this country what it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind. Poor Steve. I know he's putting on a brave face. But perhaps we can put a smile back on it if we manage to finish the restoration of his mini dust cart. Oh, it's almost on straight. Yeah. I say if, because the hydraulics are now ready for testing, and any minor errors in the squad's repairs could still prove disastrous. Claire, for one, is feeling the tension, as she knows that if the compactor's hydraulic pistons are at all misaligned, the forces that she's about to unleash could literally rip the dust cart apart. The compactor was my department, so it could be very, very good or very bad. And if it's very bad, it's going to be extremely embarrassing. Should you give it a go? Yeah. Red, turn around, mate. I've checked, I've double checked. Ready? You ready for it? I'm ready for it. Go for it. It's going to tear each other to pieces, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yay! Yay! Look at that. You never thought you'd ever see that go around. No, I didn't, actually. <laughs> I thought that'd be a horrible grating noise. Backwards. Yay! Yay. Self cleans. Brilliant. Oh, well, well done, Claire. Well done, mate. Ha <laughs> ha. I want to see the back go up. Well, let's go, go on, go on it. Thumbs up hey. for Claire's craftsmanship. You're but ready? can Jerry's You're valve ready? and pipe work take the pressure? Three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Wicked. I wonder if it'll stop. That's brilliant, isn't it? See, even you're impressed. <laughs> Bit. No leaks there then, Jerry. But now the moment Axel's been That's waiting for, it. testing his ejector ram for real. Come on then, eject that load. <laughs> Slowly. Doing it. Slowly. Doing it. Are you going to catch it? Slowly. Yay! Yay! Yes, <laughs> We're cool. Come on, let's shut it down and get to the Isle of Wight. Go, go, go. Righto, let's go. This little dust cart is about to start the last leg of its epic journey. It came from the Isles of Scilly to this Devon workshop in three pieces, and with the help of expert mechanic Fred Saunders, it's been faithfully restored. Now it's time to drive it to the Isle of Wight to be reunited with owner Steve Jones. I wonder how he'll react when he sees it for the first time. Beautiful. <laughs> what you done, 
done to it? <laughs> what have you done to it? All right. All right, mate. What have you done to her? Hello. Hello, man. Hello again. What have you done to her? Everything that have you we wanted, done, have we have. Have we done a good thing to her? I don't know yet. We'll have to have a look, won't we? <laughs> Hello, Steve. Hello. It's... It's all in one piece. All right, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. And you saw it drive Did off. It. Look at this. I haven't seen one as clean as this for... Ever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen one as clean as this before. Not for a long, long time. Shelvoke and James Drury would say if he could see this day. I just Nutters. I just, <laughs> they Nutters. Say, they say, I just can't believe it. I just oh, can't believe it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It only seems fair to give Steve the chance to try out his toy dust cart, so we've agreed to help him out on a bin route. The fact that he failed his HGV test means that Richard's driving instead. But that doesn't seem to worry Steve. He's just as happy on dustbin duty. Who wants to start it off? Come on, somebody push the lever up. Go on, you build it, you try it. Push her up, and away she goes. First load's yours, though. First bin's mine, is it? Here we go. Hoppla! First one, here she goes. Hey! 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 Steve, it seems to have dealt with some domestic stuff, all right? What about a real test? What do you mean, a bit of house clearance? What do you reckon? No problem. Come on, then. <laughs> right, now. Go on, you. The dust cart devoured that lot no problem, and now it's ready for the dump. As it's on private land, we decide to let Steve drive the last few hundred yards down to the landfill site. We had one final surprise for him on the way. A dust cart guard of honor. Eject its load, Steve. Yeah! Yeah! 